Hey everyone, Shaul from Digital Asset here. Today I'm going to talk about state management demo. In a previous video, we talked about the demo ledger model. If you haven't already seen that, you may want to go back and view that first. Although this session could probably be understood uh, as a standalone as well. So before I talk about demo, uh, I'll talk about a simple example that we're all familiar with, a bank account. So when I go into my banking app, the main thing I want to know is what's my balance? So I log in, I say I have a bit over $2,000, but then I might ask, wait, what, how did that happen? How did it get to that? Just last week I had 5,000 after my paycheck came in. So luckily banking apps also show us all of the events that took place that brought to this current balance. The architectural pattern of storing all of the events that led up to a certain state is called event source. So I'll repeat this because it's important before we go on. Event sourcing is a software design pattern which captures all of the events that happen leading to a current state. So in this case, all the transactions that happened in my bank account that led to the current state of $2,257 in my bank account. Now, if you're familiar with Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other blockchain, you may be thinking that sounds awfully similar to what a blockchain does. And that's right. Blockchains capture all of the events that happened in an immutable event log. Immutable simply means that it's an event log that has some protections against anyone changing the data after the fact. So before we go into demo specifically, let's talk a few minutes about what the advantages are of the event sourcing model. So there are a few things, and I won't touch on everything, but I'll touch about a few of the, I'll touch on a few of the main points. Many times we want to know not only our current state, but also what was the state in any past point in time? For example, I may want to query, what was my bank balance as of February 10th? How did we get to the current state? Uh, what were all the transactions since February 10th? The next thing with event source model is it makes it relatively straightforward to build a lot of important enterprise features that Daml has. So for example, when a demo user needs high availability, they can spin up replicas of any data store in the system and recreate them from the event log because everything is captured in the event log. It's one place to capture everything and all data can be recreated from it. If, for example, a data center has a catastrophic failure, it burns down, we only need to back up the event log and all other data in the system can be restored from that. Uh, in a distributed network, like all blockchains or distributed ledgers are, it's easy to synchronize nodes because all they need to receive is the events and each node can locally reconstruct the current state. So they can synchronize the state by just all sharing the event log between them. The next thing is that in event sourced architectures, all writes to the system go to the event log and all other data is recreated from there. So this leads to uh, very performant architectures. I can create multiple secondary data stores, also known sometimes as, uh, these are different things, but there are caches or materialized views. These are data stores which are optimized for performance. And I won't go deep into this. I talked about performance implications of event sourcing in demo in a previous video that you can find on the demo YouTube channel. So there are many other uh, advantages to using the event source model, but these are a few of them. Now, in the event source model, we talk about three time horizons. Just like in life, there's a past, a present, and a future. The past is the event log itself. It stores all of the historical events, everything that happened. So in my example of a bank account, the event log at my bank may say that I deposited $500, I withdrew $100, and I withdrew $200. Note that all of the events are always in past tense. I deposited, I withdrew, it's always things that I've done in the past. The present in the event source model, we call it the active state. It's the application of all past events. In our example, after all of these events, my current balance in the bank is now $200. The future are the commands into the system. Now, while we call them commands, these are actually requests to make a future change to the state of the system. 
So in our example, I submit a command to withdraw $150 and another command to withdraw $100. Now these commands are validated by the system against my current balance. In this example, the first command succeeds since I had $200 in my bank account and I tried to withdraw $150. And when this succeeds, it would create a event in the system, which would be withdrew $150. And now I would have a new active balance of $50. When I try to put in the second command to withdraw $100, my command gets rejected. It doesn't cause any new events and it doesn't cause any change, any state change to the system. Now, I'll mention that in some event source systems, we would also emit an event that a command has been rejected. And the reason for that is to keep a full audit trail, but I won't go into the details here. So up until now, I talked generically about event source systems. And now let's start going specifically into demo and talk about these three time horizons, the past, the present, and the future, and how we call them in demo and how they look. So the past events in demo are called demo events, pretty simple. Anyone running a node on a demo network has an API to access the log of events. The current state of a demo ledger is called the active contract set, set, or you'll see in our documentation, ACS for short. Anyone running a node on a demo network can query the active contract set. What is the current balance of my bank account? Or what is the current state of the system? All of the requests to make a change to a demo ledger are called demo commands. And anyone running a node on a demo network has an API to submit commands. Or in many cases, they can do this through some graphical user interface, through some web browser. So now let's, let's talk about these specifically in demo with a visual example. Remember that in demo, the ledger is for multiple parties. The state of the ledger is the active contract set. Now, I mentioned that when I say contract, this is the commonly used terminology in the industry. But in this context, you can think about it as just some piece of data that multiple parties have access to. Don't think about it in the legal context of a contract. So now if, if you're using a demo driver for a traditional database such as Postgres or Oracle, then all of these contracts are stored in one place on that database. If you're using a demo driver for a blockchain or a distributed ledger, then each party may see uh, and store locally on their nodes some subset of the active contract set. So now going back to the event source model, the active contract set, the current state changes when events happen. There are two main types of events in demo. A contract can get created, which adds that contract to the active contract set and the contract can get archived, removing it from the active contract set. Now I'll mention that there are a few more types of events, but these two are really the, the ones that are material in order to understand how demo works. The others, uh, we go into the, uh, into the details of the other types of events in our documentation. So let's see an example tying together all of these three time horizons. Let's start at the beginning of time, an active contract set is empty, it doesn't have any contracts in it. Now a command comes in requesting to create two contracts. If the command gets accepted, we'll now have two contracts in the active contract set. Let's say another command comes in, it's submitted and it requests to archive one contract and to create a new contract. If that command gets accepted, then two more events will be created, a contract archived and contract created event. And one of the contracts that's currently in the active contract set will be archived and one new one will be created. So now we have four events this far and two contracts in the active contract set. Continuing with this example, the next command may request to archive one contract and create two. So we'll have three new events in the system and the active contract set will have three contracts in it. And we may have the next command requesting to archive two contracts and create three more. And we'll have five new events in the event log. And the active contract set will now have four contracts in it. So now we'll talk about the format of demo commands. Until now, I said things like a command will be submitted and request to archive two contracts and three, three contracts. In demo, the commands are actually much simpler than that. We don't need to explicitly explain which contracts 
should be archived and which should be created in every transaction. In demo, we have two main types of commands. We can request to create a contract, and we can request to exercise a choice on a contract which already exists in the active contract set. If the command is accepted, then events will be recorded and the active contract set will change. So here's an example of why create and exercise choice are much simpler than explicitly creating and archiving contracts. Let's say I already have a car contract on the ledger, which represents ownership of a physical car. This contract already specifies that I have a choice to transfer ownership of my car to a new buyer. When I submit the command to transfer ownership, many events can occur simultaneously, but demo is smart enough to translate my simple command into the many events that need to happen and to who needs to see which events. So for example, in this uh, command to transfer ownership, it will create a new car with the buyer being the new owner. Implicitly, that will also archive the existing contract because I am no longer the owner of the car. It will exercise more choices on other contracts that are already in the active contract set, which will notify the motor vehicle registry, for example, and cancel my insurance contract with the insurance company. And each of these choices will in turn archive and create many more contracts. So every can, command can cause many, many contracts to be archived and many contracts to be created, but the command is very simple. From, as a user, all I had to do is specify that what I want to do is transfer ownership, and the demo runtime translates that into all of the events that need to happen and who needs to be aware of which events. And that also translates to the change in active contract set for each of the users of the ledger. So in this example, the new owner may see some events and may have some changes to his view on the active contract set, the vehicle registry uh, will see some of the events and the insurance company will see some of the events. Now I'll go into much more detail about this example in a future presentation about the demo transaction graph and this will become much clearer. But for now, I'll leave it with this level of understanding uh, the event sourced system. So to recap, demo creates an event source integration across organizational boundaries or across multiple parties. We interact with a demo ledger using these three time horizons. Commands are a request to change the state in the future. The active contract set is the current state of the ledger. That's usually what I would want to query and, and the state that I care about the most. And events are the audit log of all of the changes that happened until now. If you want any more information, there are a few links here, uh, external links to blog posts about understanding event source systems and the event source pattern. Of course, you can always go to demo.com and you can always ask us questions on discuss.demo.com. Thank you for watching.